What's up guys, I'm Steven. So my last video was all about making something only using what's in my shop. So I got a comment asking about what is actually in my shop that lets me do that. So I'm gonna show you what's in my shop and how it helps me make prototypes as efficiently as possible. Now this is a little different than the videos I normally make, so let me know in the comments what you think about this kind of video, if you like the builds, if you like this kind of stuff, let me know. Now everything I'm gonna talk about today, I put into a kit on kit.com, so if you click the link in the description, you can see every single thing that I'm talking about in this video if you wanna grab one for yourself. Now I kinda of think about everything that I build breaking down into three main components, the body of the thing, the brains of the thing, and the like the personality, like how it behaves, and that very neatly breaks down into the mechanical, the electrical, and the software. So I'm gonna break down my shop into those three bits because that's kind of how I think about building things. All right, here we go. Over here, let's, let's go over here real quick. With every mechanical aspect of our project, I always start with my computer. I do all my CAD in Fusion 360. This lets me 3D model all the shapes that I want, whether I'm gonna print them or not. I still like to model them out so I can kind of get an idea of how it's all gonna fit together. Fusion's great because it's pretty easy to learn, but it's also really, really fully featured and you can do a bunch of stuff in it, like render out these really, really pretty pictures of the stuff that you've made. It's a pretty cool tool. I know a lot of people actually use it for CAM, like generating toolpaths for CNC machines. I've never tried that before, but I hear it's really, really good. While I'm doing CAD, there are two super important things that I usually will use. The first being calipers. Calipers let you take incredibly accurate measurements of exterior dimensions, interior dimensions, depths, pretty much anything that you might need to measure, calipers are gonna be super helpful for it, and I have these out and I'm using them constantly while I'm doing CAD. A great example is if like I need to put a bearing in something, I don't know how big this bearing is, I don't know how big to make a void in my 3D model to fit this, so I can just Oh, cool, that's 22 millimeters, perfect. You can get some for like 25 bucks on Amazon. They're nice and cheap. And this last thing isn't super necessary, but it's so awesome. It's my space mouse. I have it right here next to my keyboard. What it lets me do is manipulate the view of the 3D model just by twisting it around like that. <laughs> you just kind of grab the little top part and you shift it around however you want the part to move and it will just magically do that in the software. It's awesome. Mine was about a hundred bucks, so I know it's a little steep and it's not strictly necessary. It takes a while to learn how to use it. Like at first you're way slower, but then after a certain amount of time, you just get way faster with it. I also printed a little uh, like wrist rest to hold it down while my hand's using it. So I don't like pick it up off the table when I'm trying to pan up. I'll put a link in the description to the Thingiverse file I used to print this. And lastly at the computer is my slicer for my 3D printer. I have a Taz 5, so I use Lulzbot's provided version of Cura, and it's super, super good. I have used Simplify 3D before. I didn't really find it to be that much more useful, but I've heard a lot of people say it is, so I'm sure I'm just missing something, but Cura works great for me. Plus it's free and open source and all that good stuff. And of course the crown jewel of my workshop, my 3D printer. This is a Lulzbot Taz 5 with the stock extruder on it. And I've had this thing for like six years or something and it just keeps on printing. It can print stuff out like about the size of a basketball, which I rarely, rarely ever need to print something any bigger than that. So this pretty much does everything I need it to. White is super easy to paint. PLA is really reliable for printing. It doesn't warp very much. It's also pretty easy to sand. Plus it has a nice surface finish and it is really cheap. Then comes all my hand tools. Now of these, there's probably like four or five that are really, really useful and I think everybody should have a pair of, or set of, or an iteration of. The first of these being flush snips. These things are useful for literally everything. Clipping leads on electrical components, removing support material, snipping new solder wick, cutting wire, stripping wire, and sometimes I'll even use it to cut through pieces of a 3D print that I didn't really mean to CAD in place, but I can just hog it out with these guys. They're useful for everything, just pick a setup. The second tool is a Leatherman. I like the Leatherman Sidekick, and the big thing for me is that it actually turns into pliers. To have pliers on me at all times is beyond useful. If there's something gross or hot or some other thing I don't wanna to touch, manipulate stuff really easily, bending wire, pulling out teeth. It's even got some wire strippers and cutters on there too. And of course it has a whole slew of knives and stuff that are accessible with one hand. And then of course, screwdrivers and files. This thing's just generally really good to have on me. It's literally always on my person, 50 bucks worth every penny. This stuff is awesome. I've talked about this before in a different video, but this is pretty much just pre-mixed Bondo and you don't have to like guess how much you're gonna need and mix it up and then make too much and then you have extra and you waste it or none of that. This is just a tube of pre-mixed stuff that you can just squirt on out, use, cap, 
and it's just always ready to go. Now it's more expensive than the stuff that you don't mix yourself because they have to mix it. But honestly, if all you really do is some like light patchwork and you're not like filling a dent in a car where you need a lot of Bondo, this is so useful. Speaking of finishing work, I highly suggest getting a set of mini files. You would be surprised how useful these things become. Whenever I'm catting, I always forget to leave a tolerance, but parts don't always come out the size that you determine them in CAD on your 3D printer. So I usually have to sand them down and these get super, super useful there. Sanding in tight little corners and getting stuff down flush just how you want it. These things are indispensable. I've used the heck out of mine. <laughs> Now when you're using those files, light is the most important thing to see if you're actually sanding well. Buying one of these headlamps changed my life. It makes it so much easier to get light on what you're working on. You look like a total idiot, but it doesn't matter. Please trust me, buy a set of headlamps. They are the best thing ever. I have three. My last two. My last mechanical tool is the all-important Dremel. The Dremel is not great at anything, but it's pretty good at mostly everything. I keep mine with a cutting bit on attached pretty much all the time, and I even leave it plugged in. Which, now that I say out loud, is probably a safety concern. I have the quick connect attachments for the blades, so it's really easy to just pop a new one in. I use this thing all the time. It's really good for little sanding things, little cutting jobs on 3D prints that, again, I didn't cat it right and I need to change it. Dremel comes in super handy there. You can get a pretty good Dremel kit for probably about a hundred bucks or so. Cool. Now it's time for the electronics. I've got a bunch of tools that I love using for working with electronics. Things that improve the quality of life or my efficiency. The first, and Hands down, the best thing I've ever bought for working with circuit boards is the Omnivice. This guy. It is incredibly hefty, but it's pretty much just like a big weight with a screw on it. And I find a board somewhere. Okay, it's not a circuit board, but you get the idea. You put something in like this, tighten it down tight, and there you go. And it holds it super, super well. I've tried using those helping hands things and a whole bunch of different clamps and vices and I've disliked every single one of them. This thing is the best. It's a little steep, it's like 60 some odd bucks, but it is worth it, trust me. It is such an awesome tool, Omnivice. Second thing that you really should just have is tweezers, especially if you're working with SMD components as opposed to through hole. I use really, really fine point tweezers at a 45 degree angle. This helps you place things very, very precisely onto your board while you're soldering them. I use these all the time. It's just really good to get a good set of tweezers. They're imperative. Piggybacking off of the flush snips from earlier is this thing. This is an automatic wire stripper. There are a lot of different kinds of these things, but these are the best. I've bought maybe five or six different kinds. These rock. You just put a wire in, you squeeze it, and it just strips it. It doesn't matter what gauge, it doesn't matter how thick the insulation is, it just works all the time. You don't have to worry about lining it up to the right gauge thing or none of that. You just throw it in there, squeeze, and suddenly you have stripped wires. Sometimes you can throw like five in there and it'll strip all of them at the same time. These things are awesome. Also in line with those are these guys. These are engineer crimps. I love using the Molex SL family of connectors and the actual crimping tool for those is literally like $200 or something just Insane, it's way too much money. So instead you can buy these things for, I don't know, like 20, 30 bucks, but they crimp that along with like JST connectors and a whole bunch of other crimps. So if you're getting into doing crimping and crimping connections for cable harnesses going onto your boards or whatever, getting a set of these is really, really helpful and way cheaper than the actual Molex brand ones. They're just, it's highway robbery. When it comes to actually soldering, there's two really, really helpful tools that I use. This is a tip cleaner for your soldering iron. It's got brass in here, and that's actually really awesome because it pulls all of the solder off the tip of your iron really quickly, but it also doesn't remove a lot of heat from your iron like a wet sponge will. And then, of course, some solder wick. Solder wick is the eraser to your pencil that is solder. Especially when you're doing surface mount components, it's so easy to just bridge two leads with too much solder. Instead, you can just pop this guy right in there and pull some of the extra solder out. This is really, really handy. For my actual workstation, I have a self-healing mat. This thing has saved all of my tables I've ever soldered on so much. If you look at this thing, it's like really busted up. It's super, super helpful for protecting your tabletop, especially if you're working in a place that isn't dedicated to making, like if you're soldering on your kitchen table or in your bedroom or something, you don't wanna mess up that surface if you're using it for something else as well. When it comes to measuring tools, there's two really helpful things that you can get for working with electronics. The first is a digital multimeter or a DMM. This is mine, it's from Agilent, and this thing is a tank. I've changed the batteries in it once since I got it, 
like eight years ago. <laughs> uh, it's just great. And the best part about it is when you turn it on, like that's just so cute. I love it. It's singing hello. It even has a freaking flashlight. Like what? Why is that even necessary? I like it, it's pretty cool. It's a great meter. There's a whole bunch of different ones that also work incredibly well. I highly recommend this one. It has never let me down. And the last thing, which is not strictly necessary, but can be helpful if you're working, especially with like analog signals or if you're doing communication protocol stuff like Talking Spy or I2C, is getting an oscilloscope. This scope was somewhere between 300 and 400 bucks, so it is an expensive tool, and it really only makes sense to buy it if you know you're gonna use it. I got mine before I started doing all of my synth module stuff, and I knew I definitely wanted to have some analog output, and a multimeter wasn't gonna be enough. If you do think you might need a scope, this is a great option. It's pretty inexpensive. It's about the least expensive one you can buy. It also has four channels, which is apparently a lot, at least for the price. Plus this thing can save screenshots to like a flash drive and it has a whole bunch of really cool functionality. So for the price, it's pretty darn good. If you're thinking about buying a scope, consider getting this guy. Last but not least is my soldering iron. This is very much not meant to be portable. It is very much a set it up in one place and have it live in that location kind of iron. That being said, it gets incredibly hot and it's incredibly reliable. While there's a great brand for soldering irons, I love this thing to death. The tips are interchangeable and very cheap, so when you do ultimately bust one, and you will, they are disposable. Or maybe I'm just really rough with them. Then you're all set and you can replace them really easily. It's an awesome soldering iron. I also have a TS100 for when I travel. It's also a great iron, but it just doesn't put out as much heat, so I reserve it to when I need something small that I can take around with me pretty easily. And when it comes to designing circuit boards, I use KiCad. There's a lot of different pieces of software for designing circuit boards. Eagle's probably the most popular. From what I understand, Altium is more of like the industry standard professional tool, but KiCad is free. It's a totally open source tool. It will always be free. You can always compile it yourself. A lot of people will tell you that KiCad is really kind of weird and finicky, but in my opinion, once you learn how to use it, it's just easy and it's also incredibly powerful. It can do so many awesome things. It does full 3D renders of your boards. There's really no limitation in the world of PCB design of what you can do with it. You can write your own code to plug in and mess around with KiCad. Can be a little tricky to sink your teeth into, but I think it's definitely worth the time. And that brings us to the software. The final piece of the puzzle, the way that we tell the widget how to be, how to act, what to do. The software I write for my projects is mainly broken down into two different groups, firmware and scripts. Firmware is code that runs on something like a microcontroller, like an Arduino, and then a script is something that just runs on my computer. Sometimes I need one and not the other, and sometimes I need both to work together. The main language that I write for firmware is C. It's the same thing that you write when you're programming an Arduino. It's super easy to start playing around with, and the Arduino IDE has support for a bunch of different microcontrollers, so it's a really handy thing to learn. When it comes to scripting, I will use Python because it's also really easy to pick up, and there are libraries for everything. That means a lot of people have already written huge chunks of code that you can just reuse for your own projects without having to write all of it from scratch. You can spend a lot more time actually building your widget, your prototype, and a lot less futzing around with weird errors and pretty much reinventing the wheel. Python just gets you up and running really fast, so it's awesome for prototyping. When it comes to what I actually use to write the firmware, I use the Arduino IDE to write C. You gotta throw the dark theme on there though, cause it just looks so good. It is possible to just write that C code in anything, compile it manually, and then use terminal to upload it to the microcontroller. But the Arduino IDE just kinda takes all that and bundles it together and makes it really easy, so I just use that. For Python, I just use VS Code for actually writing Python. And then there's actually a built-in little terminal in VS Code that I use to actually execute the Python and manage my libraries, all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's pretty much what I use. There's really not too many things that I use on a regular basis for working on prototyping that I didn't mention. The big one's probably my mill. That's kind of finicky and I really don't want to recommend that. If you want to buy a mill, I've had a lot of experience with the Bantam Tools mill. I was a creative resident for them a while back. It's awesome, you should totally look into it if you're looking to buy a mill. But for starting out, just ordering them works great. So now I wanna know, what kind of stuff do you guys use in your projects that you absolutely can't live without? Awesome tools that you wish more people knew about? I wanna find out, please tell me in the comments what you like using. Don't forget to check out my Instagram page where I post pictures and videos about my projects way before they come out on YouTube. And I'll see you guys next time with another project video.